Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda. And I like to share videos of us starting our homestead from scratch. Wow, it is bright out. If you're not new here, welcome back. It's good to have you. And today, if I can get my tripod set up properly, getting ready to take care of the chickens first. So you're gonna come along and help me take care of these chickens. And then we're gonna go ahead and try and get the raw milk that I got from my friend turned into farmer's cheese. So, everything I've researched on farmer's cheese uh, seems to be pretty straightforward on how to make it. It's just milk and either vinegar or a lemon or lime juice of your choice. Um, I'm gonna be using the vinegar just because I'm a newbie and I just wanna try something. I'm gonna make it a more savory, I might add herbs to it, because you can add herbs or, you know, dried, fruits or fresh fruits like cranberries and stuff like that and it's just super versatile you can use it for a bunch of different things um, everything that I've researched shows it crumbles it's a crumbly cheese so it crumbles like feta I'm just putting my boots on and you can kind of use it in salads and stuff in place of feta um, so I want to try it um, I have also read that you can um, use store-bought I've read success stories of people using store-bought milk um, just try to find ones that aren't ultra pasteurized and use ones with higher fat content so ones like whole milk I don't know if anybody's ever done it with 2% or anything like that but it's always worth experimenting if you can find a good milk deal right so I got lucky enough with this raw milk from one of my friends we've been doing some trading like I talked about in my last video um, I make yogurt she makes other stuff. Well, this time I'm, I'm going to make some farmer's cheese. I have a whole gallon of milk and I want to use it up using doing that. And um, I'm going to share half with her just as a thank you for sourcing this milk for me. But first, we are going to go take care of these chickens because they're going crazy right now. They want out. <laughs> so let's go do that. And then we'll start on this cheese. Oh, girls. Are you upset because I haven't came to get you out yet? I had to take my daughter to work this morning and we're starting to feel a little under the weather so I've been just kind of taking it slow finishing my coffee I knew they still had some who laid an egg next to the water I knew they still had some water and food left so I wasn't too concerned about them getting it to them right away but they want out that's their main issue right now is they're crying because they want to run around and forage yeah I bet they're going straight to that corn bin over there Oh, maybe not. We have corn we got from a bulk from a farmer that we used for deer. And then I used it to supplement the girls this winter to keep them warmer. Because they break down that corn and it helps keep them warm when it's cold. I have someone coming to get that bed frame. Kind of looks like a trash pit in front of my yard right now. Or in front of my house. But that's okay. We're working through the spring cleaning. Right, girls? Hello, my dear. I hear someone banging on the window. Olivia has to watch me. I told her to stay inside because she's not feeling too well. She's got a little cough. Nothing major yet. Girl. Yuck. <laughs> Let's go see what we got for eggs. What in the broody mess do we have going on in here? <laughs> Girls. I forgot to pull the nesting boxes last night, so they roosted on them. Girls, two in there, two or three in here. What's happening? Excuse me. Excuse me. Girls, y'all are ridiculous. I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Too many 
any of you in here. Come on. Got a bunch of eggs in here. You girls are just broody judies. Thank you, girls. No, honey. There's no eggs. These have been working pretty good. I did get a six pack of them so I can kind of rotate them when I clean this. Um, but they're working pretty well. Are you gonna go back and sit in here? Okay, let me put it back. I, I'm getting another one, calm down. Are you coming in to, to have a nesting box? What's going on here? You girls are wild. <laughs> well. Goodness sakes, girls. You're ridiculous. I'm gonna have to keep coming out here and checking on these nesting boxes because they're gonna <laughs> they're just gonna pile in them and keep getting poopy eggs. My goodness. this cheese I'm ready to sit down and take a nap this cold is coming on and I'm really trying to avoid getting super sick so I want to take it easy today but I just wanted to get this milk taken care of before it went bad because it is raw milk um, so I just wanted to take care of it while it's at its freshest um, it's super simple I don't have a cheesecloth and I think that's something that I'm gonna have to invest in the more that I'm gonna be doing this but I just have this tea towel, nice clean tea towel, and it's pretty porous. It's gonna take a little longer, I think, to strain than a normal cheesecloth would, but I just decided that I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Um, and I've also read that if you wet it down and you get this nice and wet before you put your curds and whey in it, um, that'll help with the, the straining process too. So then you just want a mesh strainer to put your cheesecloth in and a container to catch the whey. Um, I just got this little set up here. I'll probably try and figure out something a little bit wider to accommodate this strainer, but for now, this is what we're doing. Um, and then I've got my two gallons, of, or excuse me, my one gallon of milk. I did strain off some of the cream on top because I wanted the cream, but it'll still be no problem. And then I've got my vinegar and a half a cup. You only need a half a cup of vinegar or lime juice or lemon juice 
to add to your milk mixture on the stove. I've got my nice deep uh, pot here and a thermometer because you're going to want to get this milk up to about 190 degrees. Um, so we're just going to use this to check it every once in a while. But if you don't have a thermometer, I think you just want to keep it under boiling. You don't want to boil it because if you boil it, then you can actually um, cause the milk not to do what you want it to to make that cheese. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab my apron and I'll be right back. Okay. So when you're heating up this milk, you want to make sure that you do it low and slow. You don't want to crank it all the way up to medium because you can risk the scalding factor. Um, so we're just going to start preheating this pot to about just between medium and low um, just to start warming it up a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a spoon. I'm just going to grab a wooden spoon. We're going to do a little bit of stirring with it. Um, let's go ahead and pour that milk in. And we won't put this in right away. We want to bring this up to temperature before we put in our vinegar. So we're just going to let this warm up and do its thing. I'm going to wash those jars to give back to the lady who got I got the milk from. And then we'll be back and check on this. Okay, so we're at 192 degrees and I just shut off the stove here and I'm going to show you kind of what you're looking for when you are warming up your milk. You see all those bubbles? That's a pretty good indicator that you're close. So then I just take my thermometer. Yep, we're a little warm, that's okay. And then I'm just gonna pull this off the heat. I made tea because I just felt like I needed some tea with this cold coming on. I just figured I'd hit it with some good stuff. Okay, so I move this over and now I'm going to set you back up on the counter and I'm gonna add in my half a cup of vinegar and we can see what it does. Okay, got my vinegar. And I'm going to do just a hair under a half a cup because I did steal some of the cream out of this milk so it's not a full gallon. But you could even get away with less. Um, I've read some things say you could do like a few tablespoons and that'd be enough to get this curdling. But I want to go ahead and use the right amount. And you can see it's already starting. Let's see if I can get closer here. It's really starting to separate that whey from the curds. Oh wow, that's super cool, you guys. We're doing this together for the first time, so you'll have to disregard my excitement for this. <laughs> Look, we're making cheese, you guys. How exciting is that? Okay, so now we're going to let her sit for 15 minutes and we will get our... Um, strainer prepped and ready to go. Okay, the 15 minute timer is up and look at that whey separation. Isn't that crazy? And then down here is all of what's going to be our cheese. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. We're going to start straining this. Oh, I just can't believe it. Sorry. Okay, let's set you back up here. Hopefully I don't tip you over. Now we're going to start straining. Our cheese through this cloth. And you know what? I think this cloth will work pretty good. You hear that? It's straining. All right. I will end up purchasing cheesecloth, like legitimate cheesecloth here soon. But for now, this is fine because I'm just experimenting. I wanted to see if this would work. 
And now that I can do this, I might step my toe into um, actually making mozzarella. Um, I gotta do a little more research on that, but I will get there. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be eating a lot more salads. I just dropped a chunk of cheese, no! Um, a lot more salads. Um, obviously you can tell by my videos that I am a larger girl. Um, I was doing like a carnivore diet for quite a while and then I fell off the wagon recently. <laughs> so I know I can tell in my joints that I really need to get back on weight loss. And so eating healthy stuff is going to be a lot of my future. And um, salads with this cheese in it is gonna be just a little bit of crumble. And yeah, it's gonna be a nice flavor boost. Um, one thing um, I did uh, read that if I was gonna be adding herbs to this, um, I would probably wanna do it while it was still in this pot. Um, because, you know, the herbs are larger and they won't necessarily go into the whey. Now, when I do my salt, I'm going to salt it while it's here in this, in this strainer. Um, because then I kind of have a little more control over it and I'm not wasting it in the whey. It's not all getting watered down in the whey. Um, some of the ways that I like to use whey, no pun intended, um, I have actually used this whey... Uh, not this way, the way from my yogurt. Um, I've used that to be the liquid replacer in my bread. When I'm making homemade bread, um, instead of water, I used whey. And it turns out fine, a little extra protein. Um, this, however, you might want to be mindful of because it does have vinegar in it. And I don't necessarily think I want that in my bread. But... Um, I will probably be using this to soak my chicken feed. I can't remember if I've shown videos on that before or not. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm not overflowing here. Nope, I got plenty of room. Um, but I have taken my whey off my yogurt that I make and I've soaked my chicken feed in it and the chickens go wild for it. So I'm probably going to end up doing that with this one because a little vinegar probably won't hurt them. Okay, we've got our cheese here. You could use it as is. Um, you could just cool it down and use it like a ricotta right now. It's not ricotta, because the ricotta is made from the whey portion, but um, this could be used like in Italian dishes or stuffed shells or whatever you want to do. I'm gonna put a little pinch of salt in it right now, and then I'm going to hang it so that I can continue getting the rest of that way out there and kind of form a ball. So I'll probably do about, this is roughly two teaspoons worth. Mm, I don't even think I'll use that much. Let's go ahead and mix it up. I'm very curious what this tastes like. Um, you can use uh, goat milk as well if you have goats and you milk goats. Um, I do not have goats yet, but I would love to and I hope that this is something that I can do when I get goats to use their milk. Um, just a quick little a quick little cheese made. This is fairly simple very low like product like uh what's the word i'm looking for um tools there's not a lot of tools really needed you can kind of improvise um we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a little taste test i know it's hot but i gotta try it wow wow that is really good actually I'm not just saying that either. It's very reminiscent of mozzarella, like the flavor, kind of. 
but a little richer and the texture is similar to feta, like feta cheese. So I gotta say, not too bad. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this utensil and I'll probably do a little something like this. I've never done this before. But I've seen it in videos, so we're going to go ahead and try and make this. Oh, really? <laughs> Good. Good job, Livy. And I'm just going to tie this. Oh, boy. Too tight. Roughly like this. Is that going to hold? I think it'll hold. See, we're already straining off some of that excess whey. I'm gonna transfer it over to this pot. And we got a good amount of whey, you guys. Oh, this is hot. This is a pretty large container and I got a bunch of whey. So I'm gonna cool that and soak some feed. And then I'm gonna just leave this on the counter. You can't see, I'm apologizing, there we go. Leave this on the counter just like this. And I'm gonna let it do its thing. Um, bare minimum would be letting it sit for an hour um, up to overnight, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I would wanna do overnight because <laughs> I don't know, I just like a germaphobe and that would kinda like weird me out, but I know that's how things are made. But, um, this is how we're gonna do it. I'll probably give it a couple hours. And while I'm letting it do this, I'm gonna share a bonus recipe with you guys because I don't feel like cooking tonight and I wanna show you a quick little recipe that will feed the family. Okay, we're gonna make some chicken tortilla soup. Super simple. A majority of what I have here is stuff that I canned myself or grew myself. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat that I can make this recipe with stuff that I've learned how to do over the years. Um, one thing I was just showing here is I do have my own home canned corn, but since we got to get this used up, um, we're going to go ahead and use that instead. Um, and then I've got my black beans, my chicken broth, some smoked chicken that I canned up, a jar of salsa that needs to get used up because we're going to be going into tomato season here in a few months. A homemade taco seasoning that I made. Um, I might do a short or a reel or whatever uh, video on how I make this when I start to need some more. Um, a little bit of salt and lemon or lime juice. I wish I had lime juice because that would taste better with this combination. But we're going to go ahead with the lemon because... Um, hang on. No, they're upstairs, sweetie. You got something in your teeth? A piece of apple skin? <laughs> Sorry, upstairs is the flossers, honey. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and it's just a dump and go. Um, as far as the salsa, this or excuse me, the um, chicken broth, this should be enough. Uh, what's my recipe say? Five cups. No, I'm gonna have to get some more chicken broth. But other than that, this is it. And I will pop a picture of the recipe up here with the measurements so you guys can have it. I kind of just go by heart. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on this.
in a kitchen where you make a lot of your meals from scratch and you're always experimenting with stuff, I don't think you're ever gonna have a clean sink because that sink was clean right before I started making this farmer's cheese and my supper for tonight. So while this cheese is sitting here, I still have an hour and 45 minutes left on it. I'm gonna do dishes because they never end, right? Never end. So. I'm gonna get going on that and then we'll catch up back here once this cheese is ready and we will show you what it looks like and do a little taste test and kind of talk about some stuff. Um, really quick before I go do the dishes, um, that recipe that I'm sharing to you um, for uh, the chicken tortilla soup, um, you could do fresh chicken breast in there, like raw chicken breast. Um, just set it in there, put it on low for like six hours or until the chicken breast is done. Take it out, shred the chicken breast, return it back to the crock pot and then it's ready to rock. Um, my favorite way to eat it is to put a little dollop of sour cream in it. So good, but if you don't have sour cream, you can also use the yogurt, the, the plain Greek yogurt like I make. Um, that's really good in a pinch. It's pretty close, plain, this plain Greek yogurt that I make is pretty close to sour cream in taste and you can use it in dishes and you can get away with it. I've done it before and I probably will do it again tonight because, well, actually no, I have some sour cream I need to use up. So just a little dollop of sour cream in there, maybe a sprinkle of cheese and you're good to go. Maybe I should put the farmer's cheese in there tonight. Who knows, I'll give it a shot. But yeah, try this recipe, it's super, super simple. The crock pot does all the work for you. I'm gonna leave it on low just until it kinda comes up to temperature, and then I'll pop it over on warm. And then it's just ready for us to eat whenever my husband gets home, and we'll eat that up, and then we'll just have a relaxing night. So I'm gonna get these dishes done, <laughs> and we'll catch you back here in about an hour and 40 minutes. Shown this before on other videos, but I just made some more yogurt. Um, I kind of wanted to go over this. See, there's that way. Um, this is just a Greek yogurt strainer. It's already straining my yogurt. But I bet you, let me shut my fridge before it beeps at me. I bet you that you could probably take, if you don't have cheesecloth, but you happen to have this. Um, like, for instance, I know my cousin, hi Lisa, <laughs> she just got one of these. If she wanted to and she didn't have cheesecloth, you could take the um, the curds and whey that we just made with the vinegar, and you could just dump it in here, and you might have to dump out the whey a couple times because I feel like it would probably fill this up at least twice. But you could go ahead and strain your cheese in this too because it's a fine mesh strainer, so you could do your farmer's cheese in a Greek yogurt strainer as well. Um, another thing I wanted to note, instead of using a pot on the stove, to make your farmer's cheese and warm it up, you could use your Instant Pot. You could go ahead and throw all your milk in your Instant Pot and use the saute button and continue whisking it to make sure that there's no burning on the bottom or scalding. That'd probably get hot a little too fast, but you could take a look at it and try it if you absolutely needed to. For some reason, if you didn't have access to a stove or your stove was broken and you wanted to make cheese, you could totally use your Instant Pot to get it up to that 190 degrees and then go ahead and pull your insert out and do the uh, vinegar as we did in here. So that was just a couple little notes that I was thinking about that you most likely could do. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do another video showing that, but you most certainly could give it a shot. And if you do, let me know in the comments. Okay, two hours is up. We strained off, whoops. Oh my word, Amanda. <laughs> Sorry, we strained off a good little more bit of whey. Here's the ball that we have and now I'm going to grab a cutting board so I can have something to set this on and show you what it looks like now. Okay. So we have successfully made farmer's cheese. And I must have tied this like Houdini. There we go. It's nice and crumbly. If you let it hang longer, you more than likely could get it to be a little bit tighter of a ball. Um, 
Yeah, that's awesome. It's just like very similar to feta. Mmm. That is surprisingly delicious. I really, I was really concerned that it would be more like cottage cheese or, which I love cottage cheese, but I was hoping for like a, a cheese to use in recipes. And this is such a good flavor. I can't wait to try it cold. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in a container and stick it in my fridge so that I can cool it down. And there you have it. We have our very first homemade farm cheese ever in this household. I am very excited to use this in a bunch of different stuff. Um, I thought about maybe trying to thin it out with some more like strawberry preserves or something along those lines um, because you could maybe then spread it on crackers and do like a, you know how brie cheese you can kind of use to put on apples and stuff like that and it tastes good together. This is similar to that, I'd say brie, maybe pretty close, but it's here and I made it. <laughs> this is 10 out of 10, you gotta try it. It's definitely a fun project. You could even do it with the kids. The kids would probably get a kick out of the curdling as soon as you put that acid feature in there. Um, I would probably do this with some lime. If I would have had some lime, I could have put it in my crock pot recipe and I could have used it for this and it would have been super killer I think to put this in that soup just for a little bit of flavor it'd been super good but the, the world is your oyster for for making this whatever flavor you want it to be so give it a try let me know in the comments what you think if you have any combinations that you could think of or things that you've maybe tried if you've done this before, drop it in the comments. We'll share it with each other and give ideas of how to use it. And I hope you give it a shot. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye.